everybody, welcome for coming. Um, we're here today to honor uh, Earth Week. Uh, we want to kind of talk about sustainability. We have a couple of activities going on this week, and we have a couple of Earth friendly activities going on over by the tables. Um, so, our guest speaker today is James Corbin, and he's the advisor for the Seas of Sustainability Club. So, he's going to talk to you guys a little bit about sustainability. Thank you. Can you hear me out there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Hope this is working. Well, thank you for coming, those of you who did show up. I'm sure there's a lot more who would like to be here if they had known we were going to be here for this day. Um, I always support this kind of activities on campus, and hopefully we can get, get to have more. Up. Does that help? OK. And we can have more of these kinds of things more, more often, not just for Earth Day. Um, I wanted to just uh, mention a couple things that uh, we all know what Earth Day started as maybe because it was because of uh, environmental pollution going on many years ago and people were concerned about that. Today we have a very different focus on Earth Day. The pollution issue is still uh, a burning one but uh, with climate change we have a very different uh, approach and a different sense of urgency about what is going on on the planet. And People, I think, by now are pretty well aware. Probably if you're here today, you're aware of what uh, the issues are. And so we don't need to talk about all the problems with climate change and what's causing it and so on. But I think what we should do is uh, take sometimes a moment to acknowledge what uh, is being done and some of the good news about environmental issues and acknowledge those. And I'll try to remember some of them. But there are a lot of people doing a lot of good things uh, around the world and around the country and right here on BCC uh, that I think we should acknowledge. And it, it's inspiring in a way because it lets us know that, well, you know, there is something we can do. It's not like a hopeless, overwhelming situation that it's too big for me and my, my effect doesn't matter but that everybody does matter and that there are people who've taken the lead in that and that everybody else should start doing that too. Um, I just wanted to mention some of the things right here on campus uh, that I think need better acknowledgement and I keep talking about them. Uh, for example, this uh, campus and our president signed an agreement, a nationwide agreement to lower our footprint, our carbon footprint. And we were one of the first schools to do that in the country. And I think that took a lot of courage to step up and say, we're going to lower our footprint, we're going to do a better job, and we're going to set some specific goals, and we're going to be subject to public uh, scrutiny in doing that. And that's ongoing. Uh, one thing you may not realize is there are three buildings over here that have photovoltaic solar panels on them today, uh, generating probably today 96 kilowatts of power. Uh, for the campus. So a lot of the electricity maybe that's running this microphone is coming from those solar panels over there. Uh, and a lot of the lights and a lot of the ventilation and a lot of the needs we have on our campus are solar powered. That's 96 kilowatts. A typical home would need a system of about three to four kilowatts. So it's a significant size, but it's not enough yet. Next year, there will be a wind turbine over here behind me that will be generating at least that much uh, power itself for uh, cutting down on our footprint. And uh, there are also plans then on the parking lot that the parking lot down at the far end will be covered with solar panels. And that will make a covered parking lot so you can park in the shade. And that will generate megawatts, probably two megawatts of power, a huge amount of power for the campus and for the community, uh, all using solar power. It's a shift away from fossil fuels, away from the old way of, of doing things that are causing so many problems. And I think the campus should be acknowledged for doing that and that they've taken the initiative and uh, we're developing those things. Uh, and there's a lot of other opportunities uh, going on with recycling on campus. I'm sure you've seen the recycling things. We're trying to get rid of the plastic bottle vending machines and replace them with refillable containers so that people can get water and uh, other kinds of drinks without uh, having plastic bottles going everywhere when they're done. Uh, even though some do get recycled, most don't. And that's not, that's not acceptable for an uh, Earth Day sort of attitude. 
one thing I wanted to do is bring it to home as far as what you can do. There's a lot of things people can do, but I would like to ask people today to take the initiative and make a commitment yourselves to do one thing that will make things better in many ways, and that is simply, I don't think I brought one with me because I don't have enough of them anymore, stop using plastic shopping bags. Forget plastic shopping bags. Why are they so bad? Let me see, I have a few numbers. We use about one million shopping bags a minute are used in the world. And they're used for a very short period of time. That comes out to about 100 billion a year in the United States. 100 billion shopping bags a year. There's a few going into that loom over there, I think. That's equivalent to 12 million barrels of oil. It takes 12 million barrels of oil to make the shopping bags that we use in this country every year. I don't even know what 12 million barrels looks like, but it sounds like a hell of a lot of oil that we shouldn't be consuming just to carry a couple of things home from the store every day. It would be so easy for everybody to use reusable shopping bags. Forget paper, that's, that's a whole other ball of uh, wax of another problem. Uh, but reusable bags, and they're available now everywhere. You can get all kinds of fancy ones, plain ones, you know, uh, whatever you want. Uh, they're available, and everybody here today should, in their own minds, uh, stop using plastic bags. They cause so many problems in their manufacturing. You throw them away, you put them in recycling bins, they break down, they release. Uh, toxic chemicals because they're made from petroleum. Seven of the most toxic chemicals known in the uh, petroleum industry are in shopping bags. You see, that's where we put our food, right? Inside those toxic bags. So maybe that in itself would convince you to stop putting your food in those bags, uh, as well as stop using them for, for the benefit of the environment. So I'd like to get at least people to commit to doing that. And thank you for coming today, and thank you for joining us for the flag raising and for Earth Day. Um, I would like to announce a couple of things coming up. Uh, take un unashamed uh, uh, advantage of my podium. There is a workshop, the Seeds of Sustainability group is doing a workshop this afternoon at 2 o'clock, Worms Eat My Garbage. It's about worm composting and worm culture in your home. It's not an uh, industrial process like it might sound like. Uh, it's ways that people can s reduce the amount of solid waste that they produce from their homes and at the same time uh, increase the amount of fertility that they have for their own gardens and house plants and patio plants or whatever you have uh, in a very positive way. It's a very sustainable, very beneficial activity. So. You're free at 2 o'clock, right over here at E101. We'll have a, a one-hour workshop uh, showing you how to set up worm bins and uh, do them at home. You'll love it. You'll love these worms when you see them. They're cute as anything. Um, the other thing is, of course, Awakening the Dream is this Friday from 10 to 2 uh, here in the staff lounge. Uh, you've probably seen publicity about that. That's a phenomenal uh, sort of uh, seminar workshop that goes on. Uh, we had it last year. It will be repeated this year. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask. But um, that will be this Friday from 10 to 2. Um, and it's available for everybody. And that also fits in with our Earth Week, uh, Earth Day, Earth Week activities. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming out on this nice day. And obviously, we got the best ones here today. Thank you. All right, everyone, I just want to say thank you for coming out. And I do have a couple of things to kind of announce. Um, South Coast Serves uh, is going to be involved in a lot of activities this upcoming week for Earth Week. Um, this afternoon, it's the har Sharing the Harvest program at the YMCA in Dartmouth. Um, I have some more flyers for you guys to come take, but also the another ones coming up uh, this Saturday, April 21st, is Artworks in New Bedford. Um, and these are all activities that are open to the public, and we try to encourage everyone to kind of go and um, take part in it. Thank you so much for coming. Let's say extremely we're taking things that are usually going into landfills or into recycle, but instead of processing them again, we're directly reusing them. 
and we're creating some incredible things. I like to make plastic yarn and then you can take plastic yarn and you can use it in any fiber art. I crochet so this is the kind of things that I make but I know people who knit and they've worked with it and they have made some incredible things. I've done weavings with them as this one is over here with children on paper plates and also in large group activities where people come up and add a little bit as they go, like this large weaving here. And you can even do little bracelets and things. So you can use it just like yarn. And it's fantastic. Some of them are softer and some are more stiff. Like I tried crocheting this potato chip bag, it's very stiff, but it's beautiful. So I'll try it in other ways. Maybe I'll put it into the weaving over there. I know there are artists, um, my mother works with out of Lynn Arts. They've done full-sized wall weavings, and they have done the images you know, on the wall, like of a person. Um, one of her smaller pieces was of a woman, so she calls it her bag lady. And she's got that framed in here. Actually, I think she might have sold that piece. But she does some incredible things with plastic. And some people fuse plastic. I have not done this yet because I don't really, I don't feel too comfortable about warming it. But they have layered it and they use it almost like leather. You can stitch it and they've created shoes. And some of the students at UMass Dartmouth I saw last year had created purses and wallets and belts and all sorts of things by fusing it and stitching it together. So I think that as far as art or fiber arts or things like that, the possibilities are endless and it just keeps it out of the trees and out of the landfills. I can't tell you how many times I've rescued bags from the sidewalk or from trees specifically. And now it's it's tangled me. <laughs> there we go. But it's just, uh, I, I find it very exciting. I look at plastic when I see it now I'm sorry, and I get excited. Oh, there's red. So I've even gone and rescued it from um, the recycle bins. So, or I'll ask people if they're going to use their bag instead of throw it away. And so the whole point of this is to make a pot that you can put into the ground so you can get your seedling, put it into the little pot with the soil, and then be able to plant it directly into the ground. So you just take a plastic bottle, you cut the newspaper strips, and it's really simple. My son was doing this with me. You just put a piece of tape, and you got a roll in the side. Buy it from somebody locally. We're going to have a plant sale right here. Oh, okay, okay. There's going to be a the uh, uh, sustainability of a and plant sale. And if I can okay. get this off without ripping it, which I've done a couple times. And herbs, all kinds of uh, herbs and some flowers. Okay. Just take a little bit of potting soil. Uh, um, so how you know what's the good kind, what's the bad kind? Take my course. Okay. Oh, I can't even read these out. Huh? You put it into the little pot, you're and you're going to put some more potting soil. Oh, after summer. Just to leave it quick, after a straight, right? But I don't know, I think Yeah. It's a great kind of way to kind of keep its structure, and then it's going to go right into the ground. Yes. You want it?